good morning draw the electromagnetic circuit diagram for a plus b plus a minus and b minus operation using pi by 2 double solenoid wall so four operations and we have to use the double solenoid holes pi by 2 double solenoid holes as per the given operation first operation of the individual cylinder we decide and draw the position of the pistons on the left hand side 5 by 2 dcv we use here to 5 by 2 dcv you can see here this is a 5 by 2 dcv and on each side of this dcv we found y1 is the solenoid y2 is the solenoid here also for the cylinder number 2 we are using 5 by 2 dcv and here y3 and y4 these are the solenoid so as for the given information provided information available here will found that this y1 solenoid will be responsible for this position shifting of this position from left to right so by default we can say this y1 is responsible for a plus operation and y2 which will be also responsible to shift this position from this side to this side the right to left hand side so y2 is responsible for a minus operation same we can say here y3 is responsible for b plus operation and y4 is responsible for b minus operation here we have to take care of one thing that when you actuate the solenoid y1 at that time we must see that we must know that the y2 is de-energized so at a time these two solenoids cannot be actuated not be energized as we can say so when the operation a plus completed that is y1 is energized the piston we can say piston will be moved from the left hand side to the right hand side that is it will be touches to the s2 so as per the given sequence of operation we found that s1 and this s3 these are initially actuated okay and as for the concept basic idea behind the sequence of operation we know that every operation will be actuated by the previous operation so here if you see here a plus b plus a minus and b minus so for this operation suppose a plus operation so last operation is the b minus operation so what happened at the end of the last operation that is b minus operation will be helped to activate the a plus operation so here we can say b minus operation last operation here s3 s3 is the limit switch which is actuated so this s3 will be used for this a plus operation same we can see for the b plus operation what happened at the end of the a plus operation so here you can see here for a plus operation we are using the s3 for b plus operation we are using the s2 for a minus operation we are using the s4 and for b plus operation we are using the s1 so here we can see the which operation will be operated activated by the uh, end of the which limit switch that we see now here we are dividing this sequence of operation into two groups k plus k1 and k2 so here we are considering we are taking care of the rules for the forming the group no single cylinder will belongs to the one group that is no two operations of the single cylinder belongs to one group so we divide into the minimum number of groups we can divide into four but we have to use the relays k1 k2 k3 k4 for the four operation so besides using the four relays it is better to use the two relays k1 and k2 so a plus b plus belongs to k1 group a minus and b minus belongs to the k2 group so k1 relay will be responsible for a plus and b plus operation k2 relay will be responsible for a minus and b minus operation so we have to use this k1 to energize the relays the solenoids y1 and y3 and while 
the k2 will be used k2 this relays will be used to energize the solenoids y2 and y4 so for drawing the circuit diagram we have to, to draw the two parallel lines one line is 24 volt and another line is 0 volt so you can see here 0 volt now see here in the first branch you see here first branch will be for the first relay that is a k1 so it is mandatory to use the normal switches and toggle switches this is a push button type switch then always we have to mention the name of the whole limit switch which is actuated at the end of the last operation so this is the s3 which is the limit switch actuated at the end of the last operation that is a b minus so in the first branch b minus is that is s3 is here then we have to consider the relay first group relay that is a k1 now when you can see here i provided one more arm um, branch here which uh, where there is a one more contact k1 so why there is a necessity of this k1 k1 this arm this branch provided to this one it is the switch this is also the contact this is also the contact and that contact is called as the latching because when you are pushing this button it is a momentary contact when you are pushing this button it is already closed it will be on okay it will be on now what happened as it will be on k1 the contacts related with the k1 relay will be closed which are normally open and which will be open which are normally closed so here what happened so if we i push this button what happened it will be momentary close then okay k1 will be energized k1 will be on this will be also closed but whenever this momentary contact will be open this will be also off so what happened so to avoid this situation we are using this latching so latching is very important so here in the first we have to see the toggle switch normal switch s3 the limit switch actuated at the end of the last operation then k1 okay i uh, show you some space I am not continued to some blank spaces there you can see here after so this one is the for the k1 now we have to think about the k2 k2 is the relay or we can say this is a momentary switch for the group number 2 k2 so here first we have to draw here the k1 relay switch of the first group then what happened at the end of the last operation so in the k1 group next operation last operation in the k1 group is the b plus so at the end of the b plus we can see the at the end of the b plus here we can see the s4 is actuated so we have to consider here s4 then as usual i consider here the latching is there and here the k2 so normally you can see if i push this button it is already closed suppose okay it is also closed k1 will be closed it will be close it will be also close and you can see on the left hand side, right hand side k1 it will be also close so add it will be close y1 will be energized y1 will be energized you can see and as the y1 will be energized you can see here this position will be shifted on the right hand side and we can see here this connection will be here and the here will be supplied from the left hand side piston will be moved to the right hand side and touches to the s2 so you can see here the next operation is a b plus okay you can see here b plus so here i consider the k1 because k1 a plus b plus belongs to the first group so k1 is already closed so when the a plus operation completed you touches to the s2 so as this one is already closed it will be also closed so y3 will be energized and you can see here b plus operation will be completed and it touches to the s4 so see here student a minus operation is the next operation so here rule is that when you are making the groups when you are making the groups okay s4 is the last operation you can see here this one s4 will be closed k1 will be also already closed it will be closed so k2 will be on as the k2 will be on this k2 will be closed and contact related with the k2 will be closed now you can see here as this k2 will be closed it will be also closed and what happened this y2 will be energized you can see this y2 will be energized so as the y2 will be energized what happened a minus operation will be completed 
so we have to take care that when the y2 will be energized y1 must be de-energized so to de-energize my y1 we uh, y1 we have to switch off the k1 so how to switch off the k1 so we can put here you can see here this one is the normally close contact of the relay k2 so as it will be this will be here you can see here it will be on this contact related to the k2 will be also on and it will be open so as it will be open this k1 will be also de-energized it will be off as it will be off the contacts related with the k1 which were closed it will be open and the y1 and y3 will be de-energized so in this way as the y1 and y3 will be de-energized the k2 we can come back k2 which will be closed y2 will be energized y1 that is a minus operation will be completed and this will be touches to the s1 so you can see here touches to the s1 which is a normally or we can see it is initially actuated so it is already closed it is also closed the y4 operation will be completed so y4 will be responsible for b minus operation so in this way a plus b plus a minus and b minus operation will be completed see here if you observe here the connections for k1 relay k2 relay then a plus b plus a minus and b minus so after preparation of this circuit or then the branches for the relay k1 considering the latching and for the relay k2 considering the latching so here you can see the first k1 we are using the last operation that is the b minus so what happened at the end of the b minus that is s3 limit switch is actuated we are using here and for the same the relay k2 we are using the what happened at the end of the first group that is a k1 that is we can say first group the last operation is b plus so we are using s4 in this branch that is a k1 and s4 and that relay k2 on the right hand side if you see the operations a plus b plus a minus and b minus see the first operation of the each group that is the a plus is the first operation of the k1 group here you can find the a plus operation the respective relay is k1 and the solenoid responsible for the a plus operation is the y1 if you see the first operation of the second group that is a minus you can see here a minus a minus k2 and we are using the relay responsible for a minus operation that is the y2 the first operation respective relay and the solenoid now about the second operation second operation of the first group is b plus so if you see here the b plus the first operation belongs to the k1 group the relay is there so what happened at the end of the previous operation that is a a plus operation so a plus is the previous operation of the b plus so at the end of the a plus operation limit switch s2 is actuated so we put here the s2 see here the b plus k1 is the contact of the group number one respective limit switch at the end of the previous operation and respect to solenoid that is a you can say the y3 same case the a b minus operation if you see the group number two b minus operation is the last operation first previous operation is the a minus operation so what happened at the end of the a minus operation you can see here the s1 now we have to take care that when you are showing the limit switches which are initially actuated we have to show in this way that we have to use the arrow and here for this b minus operation k2 is the group s1 is the limit switch which is actuated at the end of the previous operation that is the a minus operation and respectively is the 
y4 so for the b minus y4 e solenoid is the responsible so you can see here when you push this button e s3 is already a close k1 will be on the whatever the contact related to the relay k1 all contact will be closed if you see here in the second branch k1 there is s4 is open so k2 will not be on in the a minus branch you can see k1 will be closed y1 will be energized a plus operation will be completed touch s2 s2 you can see here s2 see here s2 s2 in the b plus operation it will be closed already k1 is closed so y3 will be on and we can see the b plus operation will be completed touch s to the s4 so you can see the s4 in the k2 branch there is s4 k1 is already closed s4 will be closed k2 will be on and all the contacts related to k2 will be closed so you can see here the first operation k2 that is a minus k2 will be closed a minus that is y2 will be energized and a minus operation will be completed before that if you see in the first branch i put here the one switch normally close that is k2 so k2 will be open and k1 will be off so when the k1 will be all the contacts related to the k1 will be also open and the operation we can see the a minus sorry a plus and the b plus will be also off so here we can say the a minus operation will be completed at the same time after completion of the a minus operation it will touch to the s1 and here you can see here the s1 and then there will be the operation that is the y4 will be energized and b minus operation will be completed so in this way the a plus b plus a minus and b plus operation using the electromagnetic circuit diagram is completed if you see after drawing the circuit diagram please use to check the sequence of operation thank you